Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Bridge Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet this handy crochet hook case. And uh, this is an easy pattern. The free written instructions can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. This crochet pattern is part of the Furls Fiber Arts uh, blog hop and so I thank them for uh, providing the yarn and crochet hooks for this pattern today. So thank you so much for joining me. This is the crochet hook case that we are going to crochet together. It is a very easy design. It's made with a few stitches and uh, it's worked all as one piece. Now it's kind of hard to see here in the camera uh, all at once but uh, it is made all of one piece this bottom part is just folded up and over which I'll show you toward the end of the video this case is designed to hold three crochet hooks and then some notions here as well you can adjust the size of these pockets and I'll tell you how uh, when we come to that part so today for my case I've just packed it up with some crochet hooks a needle holder and a pair of scissors for the project itself today, you are going to need a lightweight yarn, and I am using this Wims Merino yarn uh, by Furls Crochet. It is a lightweight yarn, so you'll see that number three there on the label. And you're only going to need one skein, so that's about um, 182 yards. You're not going to use all of it, but uh, you'll only need one ball of, of this lightweight yarn. You're also going to need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need some yarn needles as well as a sewing needle depending on the style of snap that you use. So a yarn needle, some sewing needles, you're going to need a pair of scissors as well as at least two snaps. I'm using snap fasteners. I'm using a nine millimeter one for this pattern today, but it is adjustable. Also to have on hand, uh, it's going to be handy to have some straight pins as well as a measuring tape as there is some measurements to take. So thank you so much for joining me. You can uh, go ahead and grab all of your materials. Once again, the free written crochet pattern is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. There's also other photos of this crochet hook there. I'm so happy you've joined me. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here and uh, feel free to take a look around. But this channel is uh, bursting with uh, free stitch tutorials and other free crochet patterns. Our pattern today is worked in rows. You're going to start by working your slip knot. For your first foundation chain, you're going to need a total of 32 stitches. Now you may change the size of this crochet hook. Uh, my a case, my crochet hook case uh, measures about 6.5 inches by 7 inches when it is closed. So if you'd like it to be a little bit wider, so mine 6.5 inches, if you'd like it a little bit wider, then you're going to want to chain an even number of stitches for your foundation chain. So today I'm going to start by chaining 32. There's 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, and 32. Once you have your foundation chain, you're going to begin by working a single crochet into that second chain from your hook and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. Single crochet into that first stitch 
and then into each stitch all the way across. At the end of row one, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now for row two, we are going to uh, begin working some of the textured stitches and uh, these are called spike stitches. So what you're going to do for this row two is into your first stitch, you're simply going to work a single crochet stitch. Your chain one does not count as a stitch. So work a single crochet into that first stitch. For your next stitch, you're going to work a spike stitch. To work your spike stitch, you're going to reach down below that first, that next stitch in the row below and into the stitch that is two rows below. So in this case, it's our chain stitch. So you're going to reach down, insert your hook into that chain stitch. So below that first stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, and you're going to pull it up to the height of your single crochet. Yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. So it's going to make this very deep single crochet stitch. You're then going to single crochet into the top of the next stitch. Next, work a spike stitch into the next. So down into this chain stitch, into the stitch two rows below, insert your hook, yarn over, draw up your loop to the height of the single crochet, yarn over, and pull through two loops. You're going to repeat that all the way across. So single crochet into the next stitch, spike stitch in the next. Repeat that all the way across, ending with a single crochet stitch in your final stitch. At the end of row two, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For row three, we're going to continue alternating single crochet and spike stitches, but we want to stagger those spike stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by working a single crochet in each of the first two stitches. There's one and two. Now spike stitch into the next stitch. So looking at your next single crochet, you're going to reach down into the stitch two rows below, insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop to the height of your single crochet, yarn over and pull through. Then single crochet into the next stitch, spike stitch into the next two rows below. You're going to repeat that all the way across, single crochet into the next stitch, and spike stitch into the next. When you come to your final stitch, you're simply going to work one single crochet into that final stitch. At the end of row three, this is what your work should look like. You can start seeing those staggered spike stitches coming through there. You're going to chain one and turn your work. You're now going to continue repeating rows two and rows three. So continue with a row two, which is a single crochet, followed by your spike stitch, and then row three, which was your two uh, single crochet stitches, followed by a spike stitch, and then alternating between the two all the way across. Uh, so you're going to continue to repeat rows two and three until your work from the beginning measures approximately 14 inches. At that time, you can meet me back here and we're going to put our hook case together. Once you have worked your piece of fabric, 
uh, until it measures approximately 14 inches. You can then go ahead and fasten off and then weave in any ends as needed. Go ahead, weave in any of your tails. Now the fabric is the same on both sides, uh, so there isn't necessarily a front or a back. So you just want to tuck in those ends. One. Go to my other side and tuck in this one as well. at this time if you'd like to do some blocking of your piece uh, you are welcome to I'm just going to go ahead and uh, continue on with the next steps here once you have your piece trimmed and finished off nicely you have about 14 inches and what you want to do is you want to start at the bottom and we want to fold up our bottom pocket so you're going to take your bottom and you're going to fold it up about four and a half inches so just uh, use your measuring tape. You can adjust the size uh, of this if you would like. If your hooks are uh, longer or shorter, um, the hooks that I'm using are these Furls ones. So they are just going to fit nicely in there. So you can adjust the size if you would like, but you're just going to measure up four and a half inches like so. Do one final measure. And then if you would like, make sure it's the same on both sides. And then if you find it easier for this part, you may want to take a couple safety pins and just pin it into place so that it's not going to move around while you are crocheting. Like so I'm going to put one more here in the middle just to make sure. It's a little bit more secure. We're now going to start to work our seams together and all we're going to do for that is uh, using our crochet hook we're going to work a reverse single crochet stitch all the way around so it's going to give it a little bit of nice texture. So starting because you're working a reverse stitch, uh, you're going to be kind of working backwards. Sometimes this is called a crab stitch. You're going to start by, I did up the top right hand corner. I turned it around so that my pocket was facing down. Insert your hook into that bottom corner working through both thicknesses and join your yarn with a slip stitch. There are no nice places to put your hook along the sides, so you're just uh, you're just uh, working your stitches wherever you feel that it is comfortable for you. So once you have your yarn joined, you're then going to work a reverse single crochet, working through both thicknesses all the way up the side. So to work your reverse single crochet stitch, you're going to reach back so prior to where the stitch is so reach back insert your hook through both thicknesses pick up your yarn pull it through and complete the single crochet stitch you're going to do that all the way across reach back insert your hook grab some yarn pull it through and complete your single crochet stitch. Insert your hook, 
Make sure you're always going through both thicknesses and single crochet. So you're working your single crochet stitch backward. You're going to continue all the way along this side, trying not to drop your stitch as I did. You're going to continue all the way along this side and uh, once you get to the top of your pocket, you're just going to keep going, keep working up that side. When you come to your top corner, you're going to work uh, two reverse single crochet stitches in that corner to get you around the top. And I'll show you what I mean there as I come up to my corner. So continue working, reverse single crochet stitches through both thicknesses all the way up the long side of your pocket to this corner here. I'm now up at my top corner, so once you get to your top corner, you're going to work two reverse single crochet stitches into that corner, and that will get you around to the next short edge. Now this short edge, you will see the nice little places to put your stitches, so you can continue to work all the way across here working your reverse single crochet stitches. When you come to your next corner, you're going to again work two in that corner, then continue on down the side uh, to your other pocket. Again, work through both thicknesses and you're going to finish down here at this corner. At that time, you can fasten off and weave in those ends. At the end, you're simply going to join with a slip stitch into that final corner or just finish off with a slip stitch and then fasten off. And then at this time, if you would like, you can go ahead and weave in those ends. I'm going to move on to the next step though in our video. So this is what your piece should look like. You have this pocket here. This is your top, so when you fold it down, you can see you're going to have this nice corded edging. It's going to look quite nice. We now have to work the pockets, or create the pockets, for our crochet hooks into the body here of the case. Now, I made my case hold three crochet hooks and then I have a little pocket over here for notions. You can uh, adjust the size of your little pockets if you would like. You can put more hooks in or less. Uh, it's really up to you. I'm also using these uh, wider handles so uh, my spaces need to be a little bit uh, larger. Now what I did for my spaces is I measured in, starting from the edge, about one and a half inches and then I marked that place so you can see it here measure in about one and a half inches and then just with a needle I marked it that's why I want my first pocket to go I then did the same twice more and these were approximate until I went all the way across, one, two, and three. And then that just gives me a little bit of a wider pocket down here at the end for my scissors or my uh, yarn needles, whatever I need to take with me. Once you have marked where you would like your pockets to go, you can then take a longer piece of your yarn and we're now going to stitch those pockets in place. So you're going to need your yarn needle and I started down here at the bottom and then just join your yarn. If you are discreet enough 
you can do it with a little bit of a knot down here at the bottom. It's really up to you, up to you here. Get my other tail out of the way. Just like so. And it's all set. I then just simply did a quick stitch, kind of following the grain of my stitches. So that'll kind of camouflage uh, in with it. And I just went up and down as straight as I could. If you need more pins to mark it, you can certainly do that. But in and out, just a simple stitch all the way up the length. And you can see that it's very, very hard to see where those stitches are because I am just following the grain of my crochet. It hides it very, very well. Finally, when you come up to the top, I went back down once more just to make sure that it was closed here at the top. Came back through once. I looped it under one more time just here around the top. And fastened it off with a little bit of a knot. I'm going to do that one more time just to make sure that it's secure. Like so. You're then going to weave in these ends. You can either tuck them in by going back, cross, or kind of go into your fabric a little bit, tucking it in back, like so. And then you can fasten off. And your one first pocket is complete. So you can go ahead and, uh, and work those final two pockets and uh, then we'll come back and put on some finishing touches. Once you have your pockets sewn you're going to want to go ahead and weave in all your ends. You should have three little pockets in which your hooks will sit quite nicely. And you're then going to want to uh, put snaps along the top. I did one snap in each corner down here at the bottom of the pockets as well as one snap in uh, or the other end of the snap up top here so that I could fold it over and close it just like so. So what you're going to do is uh, simply sew those snaps on in place. I liked, uh, I prefer to start with that bottom one when you attach that bottom one. Uh, you're not working through both thicknesses. You're just working through the top of your pocket. You don't want to sew the top of the pocket closed. Uh, I leave a little bit of a long tail because I want to be able to weave in that end to keep everything nice and neat. So you're just going to go ahead and sew that bottom part of the snap on 
and then line it up with the top one and go ahead and sew the top part on. You're going to do that uh, for both sides and I'm just using a sewing needle and a little bit of my leftover yarn from the project. through all the little holes. I'm going to just tie it off here. And again leave a long tail so that I can trim uh, tuck it in after. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work the same. I'm going to fold my top down, match where I would like the top of the snap to be, and I fasten that in place. And I'm going to go ahead and do it for the other side as well. And there you have it. Once you have your two snaps in place and you're happy with it, you're free to add any other embellishments that you might like. I added one of my little tags or you may w uh, wish to add a leather one, anything uh, you'd like to kind of make it personal, then you can add your crochet hooks, perhaps a stitch marker, measuring tape, a pair of scissors, and you're all set to go. So thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make your very own travel crochet hook case. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.